know the hope of your call. Cause us to be seated in the place that you ordered for us. Far above principalities and powers because we're seated with you. Thank you that as we hear your word, faith comes because faith comes by hearing and hearing your word. So Holy Spirit, and do what you want, what you please. Up and down each aisle, in and out of every row, touch each person. There's something that they need. And there's something that they're missing. There's something they don't see. Open their eyes. Show it to them. Meet the need. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you're seated, give somebody a high five and tell them this is your day, so pay attention. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want y'all to know y'all, y'all sounded really good instrumentally. Yeah, y'all, you sounded like a, like there's about seven, seven people playing up here. Amen. Put your hand on your belly. On your belly, not your neighbor's. <laughs> and if, if they're trying to put their hand on your belly, tell them to get your hand off me. <laughs> put your hand on your belly. And I want you to say this to yourself. Starting right now, I will not settle anymore. There's more in me that God wants to bring forth. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not just saying that to be saying something. It is time for us. Is that who I think it is over there? Well, I guess we're all going to have to stand and bow to the queen. It's good to see you, Dr. B. Amen. Amen. But I'm, I've said that, uh, had you to make that confession, because it doesn't matter who you are. As you go along in life, you live for a minute. It's easy to drift into a place where we just settle. Amen. God doesn't want us settling. And if the enemy can't stop you, he'll try to negotiate things with you. Get in the conversation. And the objective is to get you to settle. Amen. Somebody said something about somebody when they were young that they'll never amount to anything. And they carried that around. And since they believed it, they just settled in relationships and lived miserably. Tell your neighbor, say, it's time for you to stop settling. That's not my message. But I guess we could, we could, uh, we could massage that into it, though. Amen. I want you to open your Bibles with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30. <clears throat> First Samuel chapter 30. I believe they have it on the screen. Yes. First Samuel chapter 30, and we're going to look at verse 7 and verse 8. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. Now, the priests were the ones that were supposed to use the ephod and that's how they communicated with the Lord and the Lord gave them answers to questions and things that they had concerns about but David said bring it to me interesting you can't mess with that unless you're considered a priest David knew where he walked It was off the grid in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God, the anointing rested on the priest 
and the king and the prophet. So you don't. Hallelujah. Did I drop out? You don't step in one of those offices and you hadn't been assigned that. <clears throat> and so David, he said, bring it to me. And God didn't strike him down. He sought God for an answer. In verse 8, so David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely do what? And what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Anybody lost anything? Anybody had anything taken? You've been crying and asking the Lord to put it back. I come to tell you today, God says, Pursue, overtake. And recover all. Yeah. Say that with me. Say pursue, pursue. Overtake, overtake, and recover all. Recover Tell your neighbor that. Pursue, pursue. Overtake, overtake, and recover all. And recover all. This scripture, is, it, it comes into play because if you read prior to that, David and his men, his, his uh, Bible calls them his mighty men, they were, uh, they were with the Philistine king. And the Philistine king is getting ready to go to war. And the rest of the, the, the Philistine kings, they said, that David and his folks, they can't go with us. You know, they might turn on, they might turn on us and, and help our enemies. And so this king, that he loved David. And he told him, he said, we're not going to be able to let you go with us. So you all need to go on back to the city that I gave you. He gave David and his men a city. Not a village. A city. A city. And that's where all of their families lived. David was rolling with 600 men. These 600 men had their families. That's a nice little city. Amen. And it's called Ziklag. So they left that king and they rode hard for three days and three nights to get home. Now, you know, we, we, we drive. But all you got to do is watch some of those old cowboy pictures and when, when you ride, hard, ride hard on that horse, you don't walk straight. <laughs> their legs are bent. They get off that horse. They come in the, in the saloon. They don't say, give me a cold one, because they wasn't doing the, they didn't have the refrigerator then, but they, they kind of bent over. The, that riding hard hurts. Yeah. But they had to get to Ziklag. And when they got there, the Bible says, when they arrived, the whole city had been burned. The Amalekites invaded it while they were gone and took their wives, their children. They didn't kill them. They took them because they're going to make them slaves. Now, they rode hard for three days and three nights. And then you come and find this, somebody let all the air out their balloon. And the Bible said these men, well, as a matter of fact, can I turn over there? First Samuel. Let's go First Samuel. And uh, glory to God. First Samuel 30. Because you have to see this. First Samuel 30, look, verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there. Now, brothers, you married, you can't be celebrating when the enemy takes your wife captive. You're supposed to be upset. I can't hear nobody. Yeah. So none of, everything, David, David and his, his men, they were, they had some, something good going on with their wives. Because the Bible says they, they started crying. They were upset. They didn't record that anybody was like, "Woo, thank you, Jesus. See, y'all, y'all don't read your Bible right. Y'all try to be spiritual and religious. Just look at it. It'll tell you what it is. They didn't laugh. They were mad. Verse 2, had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. 
They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and laughed and wept until they had no more power to weep. No more power to weep. And we're going to look at something in a little bit. But these were no sunny, they weren't sunny boys. They didn't have limp wrists. They were killers. I said they were killers. Now, if you get a killer crying, they going to really, really kill you. They're not only really dead, they're most sincerely dead. That's what the guy said on, the, on ours. So they wept. They had no more power to weep. David's wives were gone. Verse 6. Now David was greatly distressed. He was greatly distressed because the men started talking about killing him. Because when you're hurting, somebody is to blame. And we we tend to take it out on those that's closest to us. Now, you know in your heart and your mind, they're not the guilty one. But you got you to gotta let this off. And you point it at somebody. And the Lord began to deal with me. And, uh, Wednesday night, if y'all, those who were here, you, under, you know that the message was about how to stand uh, in the last days. And if you're going to learn how to stand, you're going to have to develop tough skin. You're going to have to develop uh, mental toughness, not hard-heartedness, mental toughness. You're going to have to learn how to uh, not engage with the enemy every time he says something. There are some things you're going to have to learn how to let go. Are y'all listening? You have to let it go. You know, somebody look at you crazy. I don't, don't know about looking at me crazy. There's a lot of folks looking at you crazy. You just ain't seen all of them. <laughs> and it depends on where your frame of mind is. In church, we can praise God. <laughs> you know, some doing it like this, some doing it like this, some doing it. <laughs> And then somebody look at us crazy and we stop the praise and we're going to give them what for. If the enemy can get the people of God to play on his territory, to play, when I say his territory, he, he shouldn't have any. But if I don't walk, uh, as the scripture talks about, pursue, learn to pursue and overtake, and recover all, then he's going to have it. There's some things you, you got to pray, and then you got to get up and go do. I say you got to pray. When you pray, got to get your heart right. So while you're going to pursue, you ain't going cussing. Messing up your testimony. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. And you cuss 10 people out on the way to this point. No. So when we pray, he makes the necessary adjustments, gives us instructions, and then we know how to move forward. Amen. I come to tell you, things that have been taken from you, you're waiting on God to put it back. He's waiting on you to Talk to him and ask him, do I need to pursue this? So while 600 men are ready to kill David, he asked for the ephod. He heard him too. But he's in a unique position that he can ask for the ephod. And the priests bring it to him, and he starts operating like a priest, talking to God. 
and God answered him. And we just read it in verse 8. He inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this, this troop? <clears throat> the troop that came and burned Ziglag, they had robbed other places and taken people and cattle and sheep and all that. They took everything. They took the toenail clippers. Anybody ever had somebody to break in on, break in your, you know, steal something from you? It's more than just coming in your space. It's a violation at a whole different level. And you feel like there's nothing, I can't do anything because you don't know what it is. You got to go investigate and do all this kind of thing and you don't know where they are. You don't know if they live next door or if they just come through town and pick your place. It's a violation. That's the way David didn't work. They didn't leave a, a flyer saying, uh, the Amalekites, you know, we, we took all your, your folks. and They didn't do that. They had to find out. While you're hurting, you ain't got time to be spending time trying to figure out stuff. Because anger is getting worse and worse. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And the Lord told me, he said, my people are sitting and waiting. And it's time to pursue overtake and recover all. Yes. Say that again. Say pursue, pursue. Overtake. overtake and recover all. And recover all. Woo. Okay. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Say I'm not under the curse. Under the curse. If you're not under the curse, you're under the blessing. So stop asking God to bless you. You're blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The blessing will take your life from wherever it is and start pulling it up until you are standing at the level that Christ shed his blood for you to stand at. And that's as a son, as a daughter of God. You're in the kingdom of God and you operate on the kingdom level. You think on the kingdom level. And on the kingdom level, you don't tolerate the encroachment of the devil. I said you don't tolerate it. Tolerating is settling. Well, because see, sometimes we try to, uh, we, we, we want to make a truce with the enemy. Okay, I ain't going to come past this line if you don't come past this line. And the devil's like, okay, as soon as you turn your back, he comes over the line. Because he already know. If you pull your bow and arrow out, your string is weak. You, you got slackened bow strings. And you can't hit a target or the enemy. You got a weapon, but it ain't working. And the devil thinks that he can take you. That's why he comes at you. You know if he's crazy enough to think that he can replace God. It's an indicator of what his thoughts are toward you. You're created in God's image and likeness. You're his child. And he still thinks that he's supposed to, he wants to be God. Ain't going to happen. God kicked him out of heaven. If he's on your property, what you going to do about it? Amen. So I've been, we've been redeemed from the curse by the, by the virtue of, of Christ's shed blood on Calvary. And the scripture states this over in John 10.10. 10, it says, the thief does not come except to steal, kill. He comes for what? He doesn't come except to do these things. When he shows his face, when you spot him, you got to know he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. Somebody that will steal from you has no respect for you. If somebody has no respect for you, why are you holding conversation with them? You're wasting your breath. Hello? If someone has no respect for you, it's wartime. They're going to have to be punished. 
because you, you can't trust them. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He will steal everything that ain't nailed down. And some of it's in your face. Some of it's very subtle, tactical. But you got to be aware of all of it. This is not a game. That's what the Lord's been telling me. This is not a game. You were called to win. If it's not a game, it's 100% warfare. As long as you're in this earth, you're going to have to wage a good warfare. So you got to see yourself differently. These men with David, they cried, but they were killers. I call them killers. They were warriors that killed. They didn't rub the enemy on the head, pat them on the back. They didn't throw them in the dirt, put their foot on their chest, say, I'm going to let you go on home this time. No, no, no. I'm taking you out because I don't want to see you no more. As my grandmother would say, David was the ring leader. He was a bad boy. And the Bible said these men were mighty men. When they came to David, they were broke, busted, and disgusted. They knew how to fight, but they didn't know how to win. There's a lot of folks who know how to quote scripture, but they don't know how to take that scripture and wage a good warfare and win. So that, that tells the enemy, I can take what I want to take. And God is saying, will you please tell my people it is time to pursue, overtake, and recover all. I don't care if you lost your toenail clipper. Pursue, overtake, and get your toenail clipper back. Amen. And you can't be a, a, a mamby-pamby and wimpy about it. You're going to have to become passionate about your walk with God and getting back what belongs to you. The enemy will rob you of your health. Go get it back. He'll rob you of your money, your resources. Go get it back. Amen. You, you've been working hard and folks come, come to the job after you've been there. They got a raise. They got a promotion. You ain't got nothing. You just, I'm just waiting on Jesus. You better learn how to fall on your face and begin to, dis, as the old folks say, slang the blood and begin to take the word of God. Not at, not at somebody. It's an enemy behind it. There's a devil back there that is manipulating and making sure your life stays in a spot. And we're crying out to God, and he's like, I've already given you everything. That's what Apostle Paul did. He sought the Lord, not asked, sought him three times, sought him three times. What do you do when you seek him one time, and he doesn't say anything? And then you seek him the second time, and he ain't said nothing. And when he finally talks, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. God didn't say, okay, I'm going to do it for you. I've already done it for you. If he did it for him already, he's already done it for you. You just don't know it. And it's that, that place that I don't know. It's called ignorance. That's not a put down. I just don't know. It's a dark spot. That's where the enemy operates. Because he knows you don't know, so he plays you from that spot. And you're trying to figure it out, and it wears you out. Because you're thinking it's over here, and it's right here. So God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Wait a minute. His grace is also a weapon. What he's saying is, you got what you need. If your weapon, if you need a arrow, bow and arrow, grace will transform into a bow and arrow. If you need a sword, you need a bazooka. I guess they still use them. You get, I mean, y'all hear what I'm saying? We got to get out of this mode of just sitting around being passive. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody on the other side of you and tell them, say, there's a fighter in there. (laughs) 
So the thief plots and plans and strategizes against you to take everything he can from you so as to leave you destitute and begging. That's the spirit of poverty at work. But God has given us the blessing. If I don't learn how to walk in the blessing and retain what God has given me, not so I can have a bunch of worldly possessions, because that stuff, you know, you can buy a brand new car now, and they tell you this, this is a 2023. Well, 23 is almost up. In a month, it's going to be old. Because you're going into a new year. Everything fades. All that stuff fades. You got to know that God wants you to acquire things, wealth and abundance, to get the gospel out, to preach the gospel, to get people in the kingdom, to, to get them matured and keep it moving and take the territory. Oh, yeah. Now, he'll, he'll cause you to have your beak wet in the process. Yeah. If you're a hose, water hose, and you're hooked up to a faucet and you turn it on, the water can't come out the other end without the hose getting wet. And as long as it's flowing, you stay wet. Say, I'll never be broke another day in my life. Look at somebody and tell them that. Say, I'll never be broke another day in my life. See, sometimes we're scared to say that. Well, if I say that the devil going to come, let him come. Tell him. That's what God tells you. I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. I've given it to you. What you going to do with it? Don't wait till when I get to heaven and the Lord's going to bless me. He already blessed you. He's going to ask you when you get there, why didn't you take what I gave you and utilize it and walk in it and enjoy it? Hallelujah. Hmm. So the enemy want to try to make people destitute and begging so that your life doesn't look like the child of God that you are. The secular world laughs at the church because we have a whole lot of talk and don't produce. We're better than that. We're better than that. You're better than that. Amen. And in these, we're in the last of the last days. And there are things that God has spoken that must come to pass. So it's a short time for it to happen. So he's shaking up his people, moving us into places that he wants us to be in. You can rebel if you want to. But now it's time to make a decision. I'm going to pursue, overtake, and recover all.